we've pulled up in the brand new Bentley Flying Spur courtesy of Bentley Hampshire to check out one of the most important homes for sale here in Lymington. Boulder Grange is a fascinating home, 10 bedrooms that we're going to explore today. It's on the market at nine million pounds with John D. Wood, so more information can be found in the description below. Today we are going to explore the full grounds and talk through how this home has had an amazing history. It was designed by Victorian architect Richard Norman Shaw. The home is one of the grandest in the area, but yet you wouldn't necessarily know it's here. Accessed via a long sweeping drive, you then come through and this is revealed. So the main part of the house dating back to 1874, designed and built in the Victorian era. But looking at the home from the outside, it definitely has a slight Tudor inspiration with the timber here and the white rendering style there in the center. Um, wood used as an effect to show wealth back in the day as it was so very expensive. And the same thing with the chimney heights. Back then it was really prestigious to have a luxury fireplace like that. So they often designed them and, and built incredible ones like that. The driveway is all centered around the most incredible tree. So you can pull all the way around, lots of parking. We're gonna show you the full estate today. Now it used to be 300 acres, as you can imagine, um, incredible. Now the home still has 22 acres. Some of the most beautiful gardens and views that we'll show you very soon. In front of me is the main entrance to the home. I mean, check out that doorway. It's a hell of an arch. <laughs> That's incredible. We've got Tom here today behind the camera. So between us, we're gonna explore the home and share it with you guys. Looking forward to this one. Yes, and before we get in, I just wanna say, um, if you are watching this and you have a luxury home that you'd like to feature on the channel or a unique property, make sure to reach out to us. Not many of you know, not everything that we film is for sale. So if you'd like more information, head to the description below. Oh, the sun is coming out, perfect timing. Yeah, for us to go inside. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> so over this side, this was a garage. So this was an extension to part of the building. It's had many uses, this property, including a children's home um, after World War II. Um, it's been through yeah, many different uses. They've changed this now to a really nice open plan kitchen, breakfast, dining area, and they have a new garage accessed via these electric gates just through there, which we'll show you later on on the tour. You're certainly not restricted for parking. You can fit as many cars as you really could expect out here for an amazing gathering or dinner party. Okay, let's head inside. Moving through the entrance, on my left there is a boot room and there's a toilet in there as well but I wanna take you in this way. We have the kitchen here. This is a small bone kitchen featuring an Arga, Siemens and Miele appliances throughout. And as I say, this was a garage at one point and then it was later turned into this amazing outdoor space with the barreled ceiling, incredible windows out onto just part of the garden that side. Now, there used to be a wall going across here. There was another very tight corridor coming along here. So very much has been opened out. We have one of the original fireplaces here. Now there are some spectacular fireplaces throughout this property. What do you think to this room, Tom? It's pretty epic, isn't it? You can't really recreate this style in a new house. It's like a, the boat hull on the ceiling almost, that shape, the barrel, like you say. And that's very fitting. We're very near the coast. Yeah. And fascinatingly, one of the owners of the property um, ran a big shipping company and took it to the New York Stock Exchange. And a lot of you like to know what the owners do for a living, of course, it's, that's the trend at the moment. But they have original windows this side. When I say this was added on, it was very much still um, a long time ago. And we were saying they've got like imprints here from where I think when the kids would hang out and play in this area when it was a kid's home after the war, where they've like drawn on the windows. Yeah. So yeah, it's an important home for the area. Okay, continuing this way, Talked about the kitchen, again, the appliances are here. There's so much to explore today. We won't stay in here for too long. I wanna take you through into the main original hallway. Um, we've been film filming some reels today as well. So if you don't already, head over to Instagram and you can watch our content on there as well. Make sure you're following us. A lot of stuff that we do doesn't make the full tour, so you can get some cool behind the scenes content. Now, this is a very grand hallway. So to try and get your bearings, I'll take you this way. This is actually, the ship, one of the ships that the owners ran. As I mentioned, so they've got that on display. Very cool. These archways are epic. Yeah, amazing, right? <laughs> Original, part of the grade two listing. Uh, these windows as well, I'll point out. Now, they're beautiful and very um, 
you know, iconic in this era of home, Victorian homes. And that's because they have these small pieces of glazing, because that's the biggest piece of glazing that you could make with the machinery available back then. Whoa. Yeah, and that's why you'll see um, old buildings like this have that style of window. That's crazy when you think of some of the, the doors that we've seen, you know, like 10 meter high doors. Yeah, and it's amazing. You think, I reckon we have, you know, in yeah. La Zagaleta, yeah. Um Yeah, amazing. And the craftsmanship that goes into creating things like that now, it's all machinery. Um, and talking of craftsmanship, I'm gonna just close this off for a second. And then, this is the hallway. So we've got these beautiful old doors here. I'll close this one as well. Now, one of these doors is original, and one of them was done by a very talented carpenter in recent years. Which one do you think is which? Ooh. And Tom doesn't know this. Ah, uh, okay, bit of deduction. Slightly different wood grain, so I'd potentially say, I actually think this one looks more like the surrounding wood, and that one looks slightly different. So I'm gonna go for that one is the new one. What about everyone else in the comments? What do you think? Have a think in your head. Tom was correct. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> well done. Well very, very good though. You know, yeah, I incredible? wouldn't have known if you didn't say. Yeah. Yeah, I agree, it very much fits with the house. So the wall was here, there wasn't that access point originally, so that layout's been you know, changed slightly. We've got the staircase here, so the main door, um, this side, which was behind Tom a moment ago, um, perhaps we'll open that up a bit later and show you what that entrance would look like. And another arch. Yeah, amazing stonework there, so the brick and the stonework. And then here we are in the center. So now we're gonna go back this way. Okay. I hope I'm not confusing you, but I want to take you on the tour I guess in the way that I was shown. Yeah. So we're now gonna go into the drawing room. So back in the original times of the home, you'd finish dining that side. The gentleman would head to the drawing room and this is what it would be. We've got beautiful flooring here, um, parquet flooring in what looks to be a herringbone pattern. But then what do you notice earlier, Tom? It's multiple planks, you know? So it's almost like that Versailles design sort of cross-hatched and weaved in between each other, so yeah. Yeah, it's a good observation. We have a couple of, this is for the, those that are really interested in architecture and might know of Nicholas uh, Pesner. This book, was, this sorry, this um, home was featured in this section of the book. They talk about Boulder Grange here by Richard Norman Shaw, who was a really prominent architect of the um, Victorian era. If you like architecture, you can read out read um, more about that. We have another fireplace here. There used to be a much bigger fireplace here, but throughout the years, not everything, they've been able to keep everything exactly as it is. Obviously, it's a very old house. Like the log, the log burner, you know? Yeah. <laughs> that wasn't there. <laughs> exactly, that's new. Access to the garden here. Now, just come and have a sneak preview of the views across the gardens from here. This is beautiful, looking through these plants. You can just sit here and watch the bees work away. And how far do you think the garden goes, Tom? Whoa, a few acres. Yeah, all of that area you can see is yours if you buy this house. Wow. Yeah, this is home. incredible. So that remember? real English dream, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> Very it romantic. And the new forest, which is what we drove through today in the Bentley, beautiful area. Like the roads around there are absolutely amazing. We're coming through into one of the formal studies. Now this is, this is real. This is like a royal room. Very opulent. So nice, right? Yeah, ceiling heights in here, Matt. You're not a short guy, and yeah. it's twice your height, at least. Yeah, really noticeable. And I just love the stone surrounds around these original windows. I think they're absolutely stunning. Yeah, another bench seat, so if you want to take a little break while you're working, you can just sit out. Yeah, exactly. But not at the moment, because that's reserved for granddad and grandpa. <laughs> Grand grandma and grandpa. <laughs> What's through the door, Matt, to your, uh, to your right? Yeah, so this is one of the original ways to the garden. Should we give them a preview? Yeah, definitely. Let's head out. Yeah, come on through the original door here. We're exploring now. We really are. This is what it's about. And this is what we, we love what we get to do. So if you enjoy the videos like us, consider giving us a like button below. Now this would be a good time to actually explain some more of the history of the home, both the home and also the owner's journey to find this property. So back when they purchased the property, they were looking at another one, which was on the coastal front, looking over the Isle of Wight, which they thought would be their favorite. Um, but the, an agent actually gave them the brochure for this one 
they completely disregarded it because originally when they came to buy this, it was only the middle part of the property for sale. So there was three different titles, the cottage, a second part of the property, and then the main house. But the agent was like, no, just come on, you've got to just have a look. And they came and viewed it and essentially fell in love with it. So the owner, Peter, was due to fly to New York and he managed to get the deal done in the taxi on the way there to buy the property. But then most interestingly, over the years, they have managed to acquire both other sides. So that's why the whole property is now back as one like it was originally and being offered to market in that way. Even though they could potentially split them and sell it for more, they feel, and I agree, that it's really important to keep the history of the home as it is. Yeah, I think it was an eye surgeon and a lawyer. A, mar a maritime lawyer a maritime and an eye lawyer. surgeon. Yeah, yeah, lived in those. And there's another property on the, pretty much the horizon, because there's what, was it 18 acres? There's 22 acres now, but there wasn't originally, again. So the owners have gradually bought more pieces of land and property around the area to make it the best po possible proposition they have. So this incredible greenery here, this field at the back, um, of course, that's the view. So they yeah. didn't want anything to ruin this. So there's actually a white house that you can just see in the background and that owned all of this land. So when that came for sale, they bought the house, split the title to keep all of the land so no one could build on it. They could have their view protected yeah. and then sold the white house that you can't even see from here. So now you have the grand home and all of the greenery. With no red row estate, <laughs> now the <laughs> <Yeah>. back garden. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Let's uh, continue exploring. We'll head back in. There's still so much of the main house to explore so far. So the garden even extends all the way that way. I think that is one of the highlights here. It's you step out here, that view is just yeah. uninterrupted. It's, it's the land, isn't it? Yeah. Everything about it, charming. Now, as we're walking back through the house, um, you can, you know, come on like a POV walk with us. <laughs> Imagine you're here, let's go this way. Now, I'd like to remind you all of the door that we did the quiz on, that Tom guessed right. The, um, the one that the carpenter had done? Yes. Come and have another look. Okay. I've got, I got something else to share, oh, okay. which I found really go. interesting. <laughs> you can all be the judge whether it is interesting. So this door, right, they worked out that the cost to produce this door to look like the others would have been a fair value exchange, nothing crazy, but obviously you're paying for skilled work, was the same total cost as the purchase of this house after the war no. with 300 acres. <laughs> <laughs> that is Get mad. your head around that. Like, so, okay, the, per the cost of this door was the same price in pounds, obviously not adjusting for inflation, of this entire house with 300 acres after the war. Wow, yeah. The power of land and real estate prices. Yeah, that's, that's a hard one to get your head around. That hurts my brain a little bit. Yeah, me too. We move. <laughs> Incredible, right? Okay, come on through. I'm gonna take you through this door, which is an original door. Are you, do you wanna go on a proper explore? Uh, yeah, you know I do always. <laughs> yeah, okay. it's basically what we do for a job. <laughs> yeah. So let's move into this way. This isn't the full exploration, but I wanna show you this anyway. Beautiful toilet. Um, lots, lots of natural light, very nice space. But where it gets very interesting is through the cellar. <laughs> oh, I love a cellar. Yeah, we love a cellar exploration. So let's head down. Now, of course, being a Victorian era home, back in the day, they would have lived quite differently. For one, they would have had a full set of staff living in a different part of the home entirely. And they needed supplies. You need coal, you need whiskey. Yeah. The drink. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you need food supplies. So in here, there's actually, uh, if you come in, there's actually the old signs here, port and sherry from when perhaps that would have been used for that reason. Wow. We do have a wine cellar that I'm gonna show you. I can't remember what was in here actually. Oh, okay, so just some storage in there. Um, let's go back this way. The port was actually on the port side as well. I don't know if you noticed, a bit of boat oh, banter yeah. for you. Boy band. <laughs> this is it, this is it. Come okay, on. all right. So original, Jonathan Limited. I wonder if they're still an I'm ongoing company. Up. <laughs> 17 Newgate Street in London. Does anyone know that location? Anyway, wow. let's open this up. This is, this oh, is going in. Cool. It's a vault. It's a vault. It's a heavy vault with a big door. Look at that beast. Oh my goodness. That's a chunky one. And yeah, it's basically used as a safe now. Oh, wow. But yeah, quite a cool original feature. It's 
It's a heavy door. I'm actually surprised that the ceiling height's down here. It's pretty impressive. Yeah, do you want to do a conversion? Yeah, <laughs> where does that go? Does so anyone want a lower ground floor flat in London <laughs> for a million pounds? Yeah. Here it is. <laughs> so this um, goes basically up into the living area of one of the other rooms, which right. was the other dwelling, so they did separate it, but now it's obviously all owned in one. It's absolutely fine. That'd be a but funny way to appear. <laughs> it would be, but it has convenient access from the living room down the steps at 1 a.m. Yeah. To the wine cellar. Oh yeah, okay, nice. Yeah. Yeah, that's enabling at its finest. Big collection <laughs> of wines in here. Now we're gonna get back out of this cellar and continue the tour. We'll meet you upstairs. All right, moving out of the cellar, we're gonna head through this door, which we've talked about a lot today. Yeah, hello again, door. <laughs> into what would be the original dining room. An incredible room, very grand, tall ceilings. And look at this original fireplace with the panels, the craftsmanship involved in these old houses is yeah, super fascinating. Then just inside, actually, we have the original fireplace as well. So the stone surround, the fire set in there. You can really imagine what it would be like um, having like a huge, well, huge dining space in here. Yeah, yeah. Okay, now come on through to the second part of the house. So again, this was where the title was different and it has been added back on to the property. So it would have been part of the original house and this would very much be the working side of the home. Right. So the owners of the estate would live in that part, most likely the lords and ladies of the manor. And now this was the working side. So the entrance is here and then it comes through. But it makes a very nice part of the house. Absolutely, yeah, I mean, ceiling, ceiling heights are still pretty good. This is heating system for the lounge. Pretty good, they're massive. I mean, yeah, yeah, it's not, it's not low, is it? See this, this is the heating system. Wait, what? Yeah, I think you were too busy looking at the ceilings. I was. But I understand, they're, they're great. It's like a, wow. It's a stove. Wow. So you put the wood in here and it burns, and then at the back there's a pipe, so if you come into the living room, um, no, this isn't the living room. This would have been the owner's office, I think, but is now a living room. So I keep referring to the original title and then obviously currently it is a living room. Yeah. And then it comes, oh, oh wow. Yeah, a little vent there. Yeah. That's old school. So this is where the, garden, the gardener would access into the house to collect his money from the owner's office because he wouldn't go into the rest of the house. Of course. Of course. Yeah. Okay. Now, as we continue to explore, Perhaps the most important room of a home is the library. And here we are. You've got um, lots of storage space that side. Could be another living room, fireplace over there. Nice. So now, where are we coming into then? So we're coming into the original kitchen, which again, as the working part of the house, this would have been where all of the staff or servants, um, they cooked, they prepared food to then conveniently take into the dining room. Sure. Perhaps this area would have been obviously somewhere for them to sit and dine and, and eat food too. And then, yeah, they all mean the kitchen and everything's been redone. Nice flooring, doors. Though I'm not sure if these are original, uh, but they look out onto the outside. Ooh, you okay? <laughs> yeah, sorry, backed <laughs> into the wall there. But yeah, I mean, features like this. Yeah, it's all very characterful, isn't it, with the bricks and yeah. the beams. Yeah, full exposed bricks in here. Yeah. So then, as we move through this way, we have another entrance there. Then we can go outside into a courtyard this way. So, like a boot room for this part of the property. And just unlock this. There we go. Then into a conservatory. Oh, it's then, warm in here. Yeah, it is warm, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Out onto a courtyard where originally um, there would have been like coal and wood storage and, and all sorts in there. Yeah. Apparently they have a really intricate um, water draining system and all like original, um, all effective of how the roof was built. And oh, potentially right. a tank under here to recycle the water. Yeah, we've well, got the, the drain there. Yeah. Okay. Um, we haven't been through this gate yet. Maybe this <laughs> where one. does this lead? <laughs> Ah, so this leads to the other part of the property, which I'm not going to go through right now because they are renting that section out. Oh, okay. I think it's being let for 24,000 per year, something right. like that. But that does come with the property, so you can buy that too. Okay. 
Yeah, it's a lot of house. Yeah. A lot of house for nine million compared to what? Some of the 20 million plus apartments you see in London. Well, shall we put a couple of other videos on screen now that are in the 10 million pound price range? You can compare. Yeah, open them up, watch them after this and compare. Okay, so moving back through, um, we can head upstairs this way, but I'm not gonna do that just yet. I think we should go back to the main hall, go up the original staircase and check out the big grand bedroom. Yeah, that's good. Coming up the grand staircase, again, amazing craftsmanship here to create this. Now this hallway is incredible. So there's a temporary panel here at the moment and you can open that all the way up. There's another principal suite that way. So there's basically two really big principal suites, 10 bedrooms in total. They've separated it at the moment because they have other family living in that part. It's almost like a separate house, but you can open that all back up. Yeah, like a false wall. Yeah, and they actually used to play cricket along this massive hallway for <laughs> so long. That's great. <laughs> so we're going to show you the first principal suite first. If Tom backs into there now. Incredible room, very grand. I mean, look at these ceiling heights. Yeah, again with that barrel shape. Yeah, barreled ceiling, one of the key architectural traits of Richard Shaw. Yeah, it looks incredible. Home. Yeah, amazing. Yeah, okay, come on through. And then this side is the ensuite, which they've redone parts of. So we've got the modern dual sink, toilet, shower over the bath, but then still the original fireplace and look at those tiles. Oh yeah, it's done it. And we'll just give you a glimpse of the view from this room because that is what it is all about. If you show them that, Tom. Look at that, elevated. The acreage, pure so much acreage. Pure acreage. <laughs> then out this way, family bathroom through there, original toilet with the pool chain. They've used the one of the smallest rooms as a dressing room. So you can check that out, have a pier in. Really big room. And again, oh, yeah. window with the views. Wow. Yeah. This is probably bedroom four, I would say. Again, very large room the views outside there too. Yeah. All a slight different style. Got tons of storage along this side. And now I'll take you through this way. I mean, look at the size of this additional bedroom. Jeez. This isn't the second principal one. There's a way bigger room than this still to see. <laughs> they're arranged like twin beds, but they're both doubles. Yeah, that's how big the room is. That's a good point. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Okay, so now, at the, usually, you could go through there to see the other principal suite. Yeah, but we're not gonna rearrange. <laughs> we're not gonna take that down now, so we're gonna go back and meet you back at that other staircase, and yeah, wait till we see that other room, it's insane. Back on the secondary staircase then, let me take you upstairs to show you the rest of the home. You'll also be able to see where the hallway connects and get a better understanding of what I was talking about. It's fascinating to come and see so many different house styles and. The architecture of this is amazing. I mean, the placements of windows like that to enjoy the view. And so the light can come in, I suppose, too. Exactly, yeah, of course. So here we are on the hallway, and this is the other panel. So you've got a picture as an original house, you can take this out and you can just continue and you start to get a feel of how long the corridor is as Tom steps back there. Cricket scenes would have been unreal. <laughs> yeah, it would have been cool, right? <laughs> and come on through into the second principal suite which was the original first. This one is, I think it's a mirror image in, in size. It has the barreled ceiling again. Totally quiet, the fireplace here. Yeah, yeah that has a lot of views. Oh yeah. These are the original Victorian lights. Wow. Still there. And this would have been where the dressing table was. That's and that's incredible. why they're over that. And then this was the other light that you had. One bed light, yeah. here's some reading. Crazy. Yeah, back when it was a lot better for your eyes not to have so much blue light in the evening, they just had a few of those. Yeah, just scrolling away before bed. Yeah. <sighs> Original toilet. Then this, what do you think this is? Uh, dressing room? Yeah, or your lounge to your bedroom. Yeah. As you'd expect in a grand house like this. Yes, of course. Looking outside, we've got access to here to like a balcony. I think veranda is probably a better word for that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Why not? And then an ensuite down here, a couple of steps. You've got the freestanding bath looking onto the outside. I'd love to pop out there. It's a shame uh, it's blocked. Yeah, I think they've closed it for now, to be fair. Yeah. I'll have to show yeah. you maybe from the drone footage on the outside. Yeah. I think this would have been 
The bell? Right, for your staff? Yeah, potentially. Should we give it a go? Oh, <laughs> just the light. <laughs> okay. That is a very... Um, what, Extravagant. You know, that's the word. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> Back in the hallway, further bedrooms up there. Family bathroom. Another bedroom through here with, again, totally unique um, tile design. Wow. Then there's a couple more bedrooms this side. Got bathroom there, bedroom through here, storage cupboard in there. Jeez, it just keeps going. Yeah, it keeps going. There's so much to see. I'll take you upstairs and show you where all the staff used to sleep. Let's go check it out. So if you've ever wondered what the staff quarters looked like in a grand house like this, here we are. So slightly smaller ceiling heights. You still got a couple of windows though, and it all basically connects. So there's a bedroom area in there. I think this would make a really cool den or a really cool space for offices now. Yeah. You've got bedding here, obviously a working space here. As I said, like there are a couple of different families living in the home. Um, well, actually the same family, but different generations. Right. So you could reconfigure it to your own liking. And then, yeah, we've already seen that bedroom. Um, should we explore more of the garden? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, let's go. Continuing our exploration, we're now going to check out some of the grounds. So we're going to have a closer look at what the property looks like from the outside over here. We've got the garage just through there, new double garage. Lots more parking and everything over there. And yeah, seating area. Let's head this way and explore the garden. That's a welcome breeze on a warm day. Nice, right? Yeah, it's nice. Oh, and we're out. Wow. It's the perfect day to explore this house. Yeah. Can you imagine this just being yours? I know. Like it really feels like we're in like a national trust, yeah. you know, preserved house. And it's just like, you'd come out and just know that all of this was yours. It's what completely feeling. peaceful. Yeah. Yeah. And the entire driveway as well you own, which stretches for, I felt like, a kilometre. Yeah. Oh, Matt. See what I'm saying? Oh, hello. I think we need to have a game. Okay. <laughs> so how much would it be to purchase this if you had a mortgage? If you had a mortgage. If you were a first time buyer and you need to put a 10% 10, 10 deposit down. <laughs> um, so 10% deposit. 1.8 million, average interest rate, you're looking at 40 grand a month. <laughs> nice, okay, yeah, yeah. Just, just cheeky 40. Yeah. Yeah, nice. Be interested if anyone's purchasing with 10% deposit. <laughs> yeah, I doubt it highly. <laughs> no. You can see that balcony up there as well, actually. Yeah, that was where we wanted to go out. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, let's play. Quick. <laughs> Your weapon. Thank you very much. I don't even think we've appeared in the I same video so. together. No. For a very long time. Well, drop us a comment if you want to see more Videos, Tom yeah. and Matt exploring the houses. <laughs> oh no! Oh my goodness! <laughs> oh. That's the oh Jesus! Backhand as well. I'm, I'm trapped. <laughs> Bit of a. Uh... Are we still rolling? Yeah. Yeah, should we go explore the um, grade two listed part of the garden? So if you didn't know, not just houses can be grade two listed, also gardens can. And if you're not familiar with what that means, um, in the UK, we have a few listed terms like grade one listed and grade two. And essentially on the listed status, you can't make certain changes unless they align with like the original look of the property, I guess is a simple way to say it. Yeah. And you can have various different things like windows can be listed, for example. You can't just go and put a massive modern extension on a house like this and you can understand why. Yeah, I think most people understand that with houses, but it's a fairly new concept for a garden. This is a yew walk, correct? Yeah, yew walk, yeah. yeah. So it's yew trees in a line. I haven't seen it yet, but I'm looking forward to this. Is this the right way? Or I don't is know. It down there? No, that it's looks down like there. it. This, uh, let's go this way. Yeah, okay. It really is just all about this, isn't it? You own a home like this, and I think you said it perfectly, Tom, it's like living on a national trust site that you can just walk around in complete privacy. Yeah. This is the yew walk. Is this the yew walk? We have now found the correct yew walk accessed via this gate. Here it is. I can imagine the lady of the house in a big gown yeah. walking up and down here. So now we've explored the home and the gardens. 
let's go check out Lymington. It's a Georgian market town. We're right by the sea, so we can maybe go to Lymington Marina. Let's hop in the Bentley and let's go. We just pulled up to Lymington. Wanted to say thanks to Bentley Hampshire again for the car for the day. Now we are going to explore around. One of the nicest things about Boulder Grange is you can pull out of your private driveway and just two kilometers away is all of this. So whether you love sailing, whether you want to keep a boat in the marina, it's a very ideal location for that. But at the same time, you're only around two hours away from London. Now, just opposite the marina area is the Mayflower, an iconic restaurant for the area. They haven't got the trail area that they used to have here though, which is a bit disappointing, but still a nice place. I hope everyone has enjoyed seeing what nine million pounds buys you in Lymington here in Hampshire, an incredible home with an even more incredible history. So we're finishing the tour off um, next to the Lymington High Street. We've had an amazing time experiencing the Georgian town as well as the history of the house. If you enjoyed the video, make sure to give it a like, subscribe for more luxury home show tours, and we'll see you all in the next episode.